There are foods out there that people regularly risk their lives to eat. Not obvious things like bleach and poison mushrooms, but foods with nutritional and culinary value. Here are the 10 most dangerous things you can eat. Fugu Fugu is the common name for both the specific range of pufferfish species and the exotic dish they're used for in Japanese cuisine. Most pufferfish species are toxic, and fugu is no different. But certain culinary enthusiasts eagerly consume it raw. After a process that's meant to neutralize any danger from the tetrodotoxin found in the pufferfish, the consumption of fugu is so dangerous that many places around the world ban it altogether. And preparation in Japanese restaurants is restricted only to highly trained and licensed chefs. Because tetrodotoxin is 1,000 times more potent than cyanide and has no known antidote, a centuries-old ban supposedly means that the reigning emperor of Japan is prohibited from consuming fugu upon ascending the throne. However, there's reason in all things, and even this ancient law falls short of banning other royals, the crown prince included, from this national delicacy. The liver, considered by some fugu enthusiasts to be the tastiest part of the pufferfish, has been completely illegal to consume in Japanese restaurants since 1985, although it may still be prepared domestically regardless of how legal it is. Domestic preparation of fugu is still a source of rare, lethal accidents. That said, a lot of sashimi fans feel safe eating fugu at restaurants they've properly researched. Absinthe The stuff of countless urban legends, absinthe is not technically something to eat, but something to drink. Various artists, intellectuals, and literary figures have been known to consume absinthe, and it's anecdotally reported to cause mild psychoactive experiences. According to various investigators, these anecdotes were eventually spun into the exaggerated claims which caused increased restrictions and regulations on the spirit in various countries and jurisdictions. All these restrictions, regulations, and illegal sales further gave the myths surrounding absinthe plenty of room to grow. The ingredient often blamed for absinthe's possibly real as well as exaggerated psychoactive properties is a compound known as thujone. While no evidence was found that thujone actually causes hallucinations, there have been indications that it causes nightmares at high enough doses. It can also cause tremors, kidney failure, seizures, dizziness, or a number of other health conditions in high enough doses. But if you choose to drink properly distilled absinthe, the doses of thujone in your drink should be much lower than the doses found to cause any of these conditions. Poorly distilled absinthe, however, made on the cheap, might have a lot more thujone than any drink should, as well as other dangerous substances that you don't find in original absinthe recipes. With this in mind, it's easy to see how the increased restrictions on absinthe might have contributed to its reputation. Spirits that are illicitly made and sold are pretty free of industrial and culinary oversight. Blood Clams Anyone who eats blood clams needs to be a little adventurous considering their dramatic name. However, you'd have to be more than just adventurous to learn what we're about to tell you concerning blood clams and still have them for lunch, dinner, or even a snack. They're named for the bright blood-red color in their insides, which is caused by higher levels of hemoglobin. It's estimated that 15% of people who eat blood clams suffer through some kind of infection. That's a one and a half chance out of 10. And while these odds still heavily favor healthy consumers, that's more like great odds for a medical procedure, not a culinary consumption item. During a particularly polluted year, 1988, Shanghai, which is a huge market for blood clams, banned blood clams completely. This was because over 300,000 people tested positive for hepatitis A, and 31 people died because of consuming them. Eventually, however, the ban was lifted, but buyer beware. Blood clams, or cockles as they're also known, are still often found in polluted water. Living in this water, blood clams can filter 40 liters of it to secure their daily food. This also means that blood clams take in a great variety of viruses and bacteria. Along with hepatitis A, cockles have also been known to cause hepatitis E, typhoid, and dysentery. With this impressive array of infections, many of which affect the blood, and more than the odd fatality, the aptly named blood clams certainly seem to be out for blood. There is good news, though. Blood clams are often raised in aquaculture farms, and many reputable sources of blood clams go through depurifying periods. So if you're sure your clams weren't harvested from polluted waters, enjoy your adventure. Kasu Martsu 
Another outlawed food, Kasu Martsu is banned even in its most prolific market, its home region of Sardinia. A variant of a type of fermented goat milk cheese called pecorino, Kasu Martsu is further fermented by deliberately introducing fly larva to the cheese to initiate the decomposition stage of fermentation. If this doesn't sound appetizing to you, wait till you find out how these maggots contribute to the fermentation. Feeding on the cheese's proteins and fats, the maggots' digestive secretions of the cheese, which pass through them supposedly contribute to a smoother texture for the Kasu Martsu cheese, making it smoother than the Pecorino cheese on which it's based. As a primarily black market good, Kasu Martsu often costs twice as much as regular Pecorino cheese for consumers. There's no accounting for taste, but imagine paying extra for the health risks. What health risks, you ask? Well, if the larvae survive your chomping and digestive system, they may burrow holes in your intestines. For those with more delicate, refined tastes, there is a method to eat the Kasu Martsu after supposedly killing all the larvae. It involves depriving them all of oxygen using a plastic bag, and is often also a way to separate them from the cheese. Feeling brave? Sanokji How do you feel about eating octopus? No? Maybe just the tentacles then. While this might seem exotic to many cultures, it's actually quite common in others. However, some cultures' take on eating octopus is definitely bolder than others. For instance, let's look to Korea. A daring Korean specialty often referred to as live octopus tentacles, sanokji could be more accurately described as raw fresh octopus tentacles. So fresh, in fact, that many suction cups on those tentacles are still functioning. Not only does this mean that those tentacles can still move, it also means that the suction cups can tightly latch onto a diner's tongue, lips, or throat. As you can imagine, this holds considerable danger for the inexperienced eater. And aside from having the potential to be extremely painful, could cause a diner to fatally choke on a piece of tentacle while swallowing. There have been fatalities amongst Sanokji diners. Anyone who insists on gobbling down these octopus tentacles would be well advised to wait until their movements slow down a lot. Maybe also spend a little extra time chewing this unconventional snack. In particular, make sure you've completely broken apart and chewed through any suction pads on your bite-sized tentacle slice before attempting to swallow. Larb While this unique dish sounds like a corruption or mispronunciation of lard, that is in fact not the case. Originating in Laos, larb is a raw meat salad that is often found in various parts of Indochina and Southeast Asia. What type of meat, you ask? Well, that's up to the cook. Maybe today you get raw beef, maybe tomorrow you get raw pork. Maybe it's armadillo time. You might even find yourself munching on a raw goat meat salad. Starting to see what the problem is now? Because the meats used can vary widely, the same variety applies to the range of risks involved. Of course, there are cooks, and in fact entire areas, which limit the meats used in their larb dishes to one or two selections. However, the risks associated with only a single type of raw meat can often be more than enough. For instance, let's take a look at the consumption of larb made from wild boar meat. 2019 saw almost two dozen well-documented fatalities from eating wild boar meat larb in Thailand. The wild boar meat caused hundreds of streptococcus infections, 23 of which proved fatal. Across the ocean, many miles away, the same type of meat in a larb salad also caused a trichinolosis infection earlier in 2016, affecting a dozen partygoers in California. There are risks you take, and then there are risks you don't. So, under which of those two categories would you classify larb? Chilled monkey brain. Monkey brain. The consumption of monkey brain as a dish is a widely debated topic. While there are well-documented anecdotes of monkey brain consumption in history up to the 20th century, and some people alive today claim to have eaten this controversial dish, there is debate as to whether or not monkey brain are still served in traditional meals in the modern day. Reports of monkey brain as a traditional dish abound about East Asia. Although various African countries are sometimes implicated in the context of ceremonial, non-culinary cultural consumption as well. Contributing to the confusion may be a strain of Heresium arenaceus, known as lion's mane mushroom, or also as 
monkey head mushroom in East Asia because of its superficial resemblance to the fur of some East Asian primates. Consuming this mushroom shaped like a monkey head, covered with monkey-like fur substance, while it's literally being called monkey head, may have given some tourists the impression that they had eaten monkey brain while in reality, they never did. Ironically, eating monkey brain can prove extremely destructive for the human brain, since monkey brains may infect consuming humans with neurodegenerative diseases such as the Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Neurodegenerative diseases which affect the brain typically destroy various brain functions and may include symptoms such as dementia before ultimately leading to death. Talk about a no-brainer! Elderberries To the untrained eye, elderberries can easily be mistaken for blueberries. More than that, the two berry cousins share culinary and nutritional similarities as well. Both berries are used in many traditional recipes and can also be made into alcoholic beverages. The main difference, however, lies in the toxicity. Elderberries produce enough cyanogenic glycosides to make consuming them raw a dangerous matter. Elderberries are dangerous to consume raw, unripe, undercooked, or in the case of elderberry wine, insufficiently fermented. Elderberries are considered toxic, but not necessarily poisonous. You would be unlikely to consume enough raw elderberries to die, since you'd probably feel sick pretty quickly. Still, symptoms like diarrhea, weakness, vomiting, dizziness, nausea, and other adverse events are probably things you can live without. If you absolutely have to eat something made with elderberries, make sure they're all fully ripe and very well cooked. Greenland Shark the idea of eating sharks has long held great mystique for some people. Not all shark eaters approach their dishes with a sense of exoticism, though. For example, the Greenland shark is a staple of traditional consumption in Iceland. It's not eaten right after it's caught, however. How long between catching a Greenland shark and eating it? How does three to five months sound? That's how long Greenland shark meat needs to be hung to dry after curing. A fascinating animal that can live for centuries, often without the aid of its eyesight, which is frequently lost to parasites, the Greenland shark also lacks a urinary tract system. Much of the toxic waste inside of the shark's body therefore needs to be filtered and excreted through the shark's skin and flesh. This filtration of toxic waste concentrates high amounts of trimethylamine oxide and urea in the shark's skin and body, hence the need to sometimes wait for almost half a year, or at least a quarter of one, before eating a Greenland shark from the date of catching it. Eating Greenland shark meat before it's been properly cured and dried can result in severe illness, confusion, intoxication, and even death if you eat enough of it. However, even though it's called the Greenland shark, it's actually the national dish of Iceland. The humor is probably not lost on you. What this means for you, though, is that you could probably order it from a reputable shop in Iceland without risking any of the above. Still, if you don't speak Icelandic, how can you tell if a shop is reputable? There might lie your next adventure. Raw Cashews Cashews sound innocent enough. I mean, they're on the shelves of every grocery store, right? They're pricier than some other nuts, but if your finances are in good shape, you could probably have many cupfuls a week without suffering any immediate problems. In fact, some East Asian rice-based dishes become phenomenally tastier if you tip a cup of cashews onto your rice before digging in. Not so fast, though. That mostly applies to the cashews you normally buy at the store. Store cashews, even those that aren't roasted or even labeled raw, have been steamed enough to remove the most dangerous chemical found in their true raw form, urushiol. The good news is that cashews sans urushiol are the most common type of cashews being sold in most retail locations near you. You mostly need to watch out if you're directly harvesting cashews or buying them very close to where they're traditionally cultivated. Otherwise, don't worry too much about it and enjoy your nutty treat. If your salts, minerals, and blood pressure are all in great shape, you can go nuts, so to speak. Stay right here and check out another great Babble Top video. It's easy, just tap or click. Thanks.